اللهم صل على محمد رسول الله اللهم صل على محمد رسول الله اعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاه والسلام على اشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ونسيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يدلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أيتها الأخوات أيها الأخوة يحييكم بتحية الإسلام تحية من عند الله مباركة طيبة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Thank you for this introduction. Thank you for this invitation. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy to be here for many reasons, and, and I'm not going to list all the reasons why I'm happy to be here, because it's a long relationship, uh, not only with ICNA, but with what is the, the essence of what we are bearing together. And I'm close to this. It's your message, it's my message, it's the message of Islam, alhamdulillah. So thank you for that. Thank you for your words. Uh, also, just before I start, and, and as you were saying, and what we heard today, social justice and, and our understanding of social justice from an Islamic viewpoint and especially also in the states where you live, and this is your country, this is what you have to build for yourself, for your fellow citizens, and for the common future. It's really important for us to understand the essence of our message as Muslims, and in which way we have to be involved with social justice. So let me uh, start with an introduction, and, and just to raise some of the points that are important from our understanding, from our uh, uh, frame of reference as Muslims, but also as American citizens. Um, let me tell you something. Uh, you were referring to, to my last book, The Quest for Meaning. And what I was trying to do in this book, The Quest for Meaning, is really to develop a philosophy of pluralism and to come with an understanding of some of the topics and some of the essential topics of our time, from the quest for meaning, the universals, uh, uh, equality, women and men, uh, compassion and spirituality. And one of these topics is really this one. It has to do with justice, is the way we are dealing with justice and the way we have to, to think about it. And I would say that uh, if you read you know, the different religions and different philosophies and different spiritualities. This is where we have a common concept. We might differ or disagree on, on some of the dimensions of how do we deal with justice, of course, because every single philosophy or every single religion, we have a specific understanding, but still, with di different understandings, we have a common ground, and we have to come to this. Be careful with all these new philosophies talking about postmodern uh, uh, approaches and postmodernism, and they are promoting something which is, oh, there is nothing we can agree. There are as many viewpoints as human beings. It's very dangerous. By coming with a very complicated way of dealing with principles, we are lost. And in fact, it might be that this is the purpose of the whole business, is to get us lost. Why not? It's not like this. We have principles, and there are things that we have to understand. And as Muslims, let us come back to the principles in order to know what is our vision. The principles to know our goals the principles to know our objectives, and in which way we are faithful to the principles in order to change this society for the better. Let us start with this, because we don't agree, Muslims, on one thing. It might be that here, the great majority of you, because you are here, you agree on something which is the essence of our religion. 
But I can tell you something that I, by talking to other Muslims and in other settings with other trans, we don't agree on one thing. If you are Muslims and you understand the very meaning of Islam, wherever you are as Muslims, it means for you that you have to change the society for the better. Wherever you are. So it means if you think that your presence in the United States of America is just a, a, a presence by accident, you haven't understood the divine project for you. The divine project for you is not to be here to be invisible or to be shy or to apologize for being Muslims. It's exactly the opposite. It's to be Muslims in the United States of America to change and to reform the United States of America to be a better society. You are here to contribute to change and to reform this society. So while you are praying five times a day, when you are fasting one month a year, when you are praying during the night, is to help you to get the very essence of this message. Change this society for the better. And one of these dimensions is social justice. But we have to be clear on this, is that social justice is not a state of affairs. Just social justice is an ideal. This is what we are trying to reach, social justice. It's an, an ongoing struggle, a never-ending struggle. We are not going to get social justice. It will never be perfect. So we know that when, for example, we have to struggle against poverty, there is nothing in the Quran and nothing in the prophetic tradition telling you that one day we will not face poverty. No. Our understanding is that it's a challenge. It's something that we have to change. But as to a perfect society where there will be no poor people, it's not our... We are not... Us at, we are not uh, uh, told that some, some, it will happen someday. No. What we have to do is we are not struggling for the result. We are struggling to reform and our intention in, in this change and do as much as you can. Do the best you can to change this society. So we are dealing with something which is a goal which is helping you, us to change ourselves and to change the society knowing that in this life Nothing perfect is going to happen. Absolute justice is with God. This is for him. For us is try to do it as much as you can, trying to reach relative justice. But what we can do, you have to do. And this is why, be careful with, I'm always repeating this verse that we are very, very quick to quote as saying, oh, you know, do what you can do. Allah is not asking you more than what you can bear. That we know this. But be careful. What you can, you should. And ask yourself when you are coming here, supporting this organization, have you done, have you done what you can? Or are you just saying, oh, it's just a verse behind which you hide? Because it's very easy to say, Okay, this is what Allah SWT is telling me. I cannot do more than, I should not do more than I can. But you have to reverse the understanding. Ask yourself, are you doing what you can? Is that the reality? Is this the reality of your involvement in this society? It might be that what is perceived and understood as a very easy verse, in fact, is a very heavy one. Very tough. Because Allah SWT is telling you, are you pushing as much as you can? Are you doing it? Or are you just trying to find the, fa the, the easiest way to be a Muslim? So, this is something which is the starting point of our discussion, is to think about social justice as an objective, an ongoing struggle. You are not going to end it. You will die trying to change the society without reaching your goal. That's it. So why I'm saying this? Because it's a struggle, the starting point of this struggle is humility. Be humble. 
but at the same time be humble with Allah SWT and be ambitious with human beings. This is a struggle where we need ambition and humility, humility and ambition. You have to be humble as to the result, ambitious as to the struggle. You know why? Because this is the very meaning of it tawakkul ala Allah. It tawakkul ala Allah means tawakkaltu ala Allah means whatever He wants is going to happen. If you don't like it, you don't want it, if He wants, it's going to happen. So it means that everything is possible. If the Prophet ﷺ was starting with some of you know, our mindset or our mentality, he wouldn't have gone to change the world. Why? Because at the beginning there were five, and they were coming and say, okay, we are going to give you whatever you want, but stop. I said, I'm not going to stop. I'm not. You know why? Because you think that I'm working against you. He knows that I'm working for him. So do whatever you want, I'm going to carry on the struggle. Because it's for him. Put the sun here and the moon here, I'm not going to stop. Your richness, your wealth is nothing compared to his closeness. This is what I want. I want his love. I don't want your money. So this is the second point. What do you want? To be praised by the people because you struggle for justice and to be loved by God because you respond to his call, which is part of his presence with, in your life and in our daily life. So this is the starting point. The second thing which is important when it comes to this is to understand why we are struggling for social justice. Social justice is an objective, but it's not an end per se. It's, just a, it's but a means to get that peace that we want among people in ourself and within our society. Justice is a condition of peace. Justice is a condition of inner peace, to be just with our own self, to be at peace with ourselves, and to be just in the society to get social peace. No social peace without social justice. So it's a means at the same time. And we have to get this as something which is important. And this is why, you know, the, the previous scholars, when they were coming to extracting from the texts the objectives, what we call in maqasi, they came with, you know, the five or the six principles that we know, and this is repeated. But there is something which is, why do we go for this beyond our religious community? Because we heard reading the Quran, we dignified human beings, not only Muslims, not only believers, human beings. And start with this, when sometimes you go outside, you see people, they are acting against their own dignity. You see this, when someone is drunk, you can see because you are losing your lucidity, you are losing your mind, you act against your own dignity. But me, in the name of God, I look at your dignity beyond the way you are behaving against it. Your dignity is stronger than your behavior. So it might be that I can see the sign of God in your being while your acting is against your being. And this is why you are serving the beings sometimes against the behaving, the way they behave. So this is why we should go beyond the judgment. Sometimes you have to understand that we respect the beings while you disagree with the way the people behave. Why you would do this? You know why? Because sometimes in our struggle for the beings and the dignity of the beings, by respecting the beings, the people are going to change the way they behave. I might act against my dignity, but if you look at me, the dignity of my being, you might remind me of something which is beyond me, and I will come back. If you show that you love me, whatever I am doing, it might result for me to change my way of behaving to come to the dignity of the way you look at my being. And this was the way the Prophet was doing. This is pedagogy. This is 
I look at you beyond what you are doing and because you see that I'm looking at you and I respect your being, you change the way you are. And this is why the Muslims in this society should be very instrumental by doing this. Stop judging and start acting by respecting the people. So to look beyond what the people are doing and then to understand that three dimensions are important. Dignity, Adam, as I said. The second thing which is equality, it's very important. The, very, the starting point of the Tawheed, when Allah SWT sent the first revelation saying, I'm the only God. There is only one God. Saying what to all the people? There is only one humanity. And this humanity is means before God you are all equal. Black and white, rich and poor. And the symbol of this is the pilgrimage. The pilgrimage is you are black, you are white, you are rich, you are poor. At the end of the day, at the center, you are all equal. It's the same just to remind yourself the, the equality which is the basis of Islam. There is, no, there is no one humanity if there is no equality before God. So the oneness of God, it tawheed, la ilaha illallah, means the unity and the equality among, among human beings. And this is the starting point of al karama dignity and equality. I want you to treat me the same way as you are treating people. And this is something which is so important. So important. Even, you know, you remember how Ali Karram Allah was asking the judge, don't use the title when you call me and no title for this guy. You are calling him. If you call him without title, you call me without title. Not like we you know today, Muslims, we like titles. Yeah, professor, yeah, doctor, yeah, sheikh, yeah, allama. And we have a lot of... And the one who is just near to you, you forget that at the end of the day, there is no title before God. Do you think that Allah SWT is calling Professor Tariq? No, it's Tariq. And the only thing is you are brother and sister, and this is the only title which is known in the Quran. Innam al mu'minun ikhwa. This is the, 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 the title which is the most important. And ikhwa mean, al ukhwa means al muakha, what the Prophet did when they arrived in Medina. You are the brother of this one. And this is equality, and this is love, and this is uh, mutual support. This is the community. It's not a community of titles, it's a community of feeling and equality, a community of dignity. Of mutual respect. So these are the three dimensions which are important. No, so the first, this is the second one. The third one which is very important for us and never forget that when you come to speak about social justice in the United States of America and in any society, it's not only about equality, it's not only about dignity, it's something which is important, it's about well-being. Don't, don't forget this dimension in the way we deal about social justice. Because very often we come about social justice and speak about equality, money, poverty. It's not only this. You can be rich and feeling bad. And in, you are in a society when it is said, according to the survey, that three people out of four, they need to find someone they pay to be heard. How do you call that? When I have to give you money to be heard, because I have something to tell you. My heart is not at peace. There is inner injustice. There is something which is not going right. Lack of well-being. Give me all the money you want, but at the end, if I don't feel good, there is something which is missing. And for us, this dimension of well-being it's critical, it's crucial in the way we deal with social justice as Muslims. Don't forget this dimension. Because if we speak about social justice, we also speak about, you know, feeling, love, and spirituality, which is so important. 
and I will come to this. And, and by the way, at the end of the day, how is it going to be for a nafs, for the human being who will have been just with his own self or her own self? How Allah subhanahu wa is calling him or her. Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutma'inna. You are the tranquil, at peace, nafs. What does it mean? You have been just with yourself. This justice with yourself will lead you towards this tranquility, feeling good. So this is what we want in our society. This is what you want in your, in your families, in your house, in, at home, among the people within our community, but also within our society. Three dimensions, dignity, equality, well-being. And let me come to, to, uh, to what we, we have to do. Talking about this, it's all good, it's theoretical, it could be nice. But now you live in this country, and as we heard the, you know, the, 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 the numbers, the figures, it's quite alarming, it's worrying what is happening in our society. The problem with the Muslims is that if we come and we ask them to build mosques, they are going to give money. To build a, a school, we are going to give money. But when it comes to this, you know, wider struggle with Muslims and non-Muslims in the name of our human dignity, in, our, in the name of equality, in the name of well-being, in the name of our principles, the Muslims are very, very uh, 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 defensive on that, not really involved in giving the money and understanding that this is a priority of our struggle. What we have to do is really to be the driving force of this reform in this society. So we need to come with a vision, but the vision will come with a better understanding of the society. No vision in the United States of America without understanding your country, without understanding what is happening at the local level and at the national level. So you need to have the figures, you need to have a vision, you have to know the priorities and the steps. What is the first? What is the second? What are we going to do to change the situation? So this is why it's important to know your religion and at the same time to know your environment. This is where it's so important for every single Muslim. Now if we come from an Islamic perspective, let me put it that way because very often you understand the meaning of a collective objective when it you come to the individual objective the inner objective of islam very much you will see very often that there is a mirroring reality between the inner life and the collective social life and when you come to to understanding this when you have in the quran allahumma zalamna anfusana wa in lam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna min al-khasirin oh god we have been unjust with our own self don't forgive us and, uh, 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 and, 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 and show mercy to, towards us, we are going to be lost. We are going to, to lose our way. We have been in just with our own self. If you come to this, what does it mean? We have been in just with our own self. We have behaved in a way where it was not just with our own heart, with our own needs. But what do we mean here? When we have this, you know, supplication, invocation coming from the Prophet, peace be upon him, it's different dimension. When does it start when we are not just with our own self? The, first, the starting point for us to be just with our own self is to acknowledge our own needs. And the first one is the basic needs that we have, to eat and to drink is something which has to be given by the society. If a society is not giving this to a human being, it's not protecting his or her dignity. So this is the first thing which is important. But it's natural to have it in mind when, it starts, when we start talking about this. It's about food and eating, but there is something which is important. A second is something which is important. A home, a house, somewhere where you can be protected. This is where you, have, you are going to be just with your own self. It's so important in the society that even when Allah SWT is speaking about love, he's comparing love to a second. 
ومن آياته خلق لكم من أنفسكم أزواجا لتسكنوا إليها لتسكنوا السكن this is why you get this protection you need an intimate sentimental protection but you need a social protection you need a house you need a home and this is the starting point look at what is happening in your country so many people they don't even have a home they are homeless in the most industrialized societies today they are homeless this is not dignity. This is the starting point of acknowledging that something is going wrong in this country, as in the West, in all the societies. And by the way, in the Muslim majority countries, it's exactly the same. The point is that you are here and you have to, to care about what is happening here. This is the starting point. We have been in just with our own self. No food for, for some people, nothing to eat, and then homeless. That's wrong. But that's not only this which is part of the process. What is said and in which way we have to understand to be just with your own self? To be just with your mind means that you have to be educated. Education is a right. Education is a right. No human, human being, no spirituality without education because spirituality is all about education. You become a spiritual man or a spiritual woman with and through education. This is something which is a basic right. If you look at what we are doing with your own self, you are not respecting your mind if you are not educating your intelligence, if you don't get knowledge. Knowledge is a right and it's a necessity. It's even an obligation for us. That Asking and seeking knowledge is an obligation for every single man, every single woman. So education is a dimension which is important. It's not only this. It's not enough for me to eat and to drink. It's not enough for me to have a home. It's not even for me enough to get knowledge and education. There is something which is important. If you want to build a society, you need something which is essential in this society is human brotherhood. And this happened in Medina. Don't miss that point. That if we want to be just in a society, there is something which has to do with brotherhood, solidarity, and love. And we need to connect social justice with love within the society, mutual respect, and this dimension which is so important in brotherhood. And brotherhood is about this. Brotherhood is not only to support your brother or your sister when something is going wrong. It's to be there just to help the people to, to feel that they are part of a community. So this dimension is very important. We don't get the very essence of what happened in Medina, the Medinian experience, if we don't start with El Mu'akha, which is people who had money in Medina. People who had no money coming from Mecca. The people from Mecca had the spiritual message. The people from Medina, they had the social wealth. And he told, he told them, okay, this is equality now. You will give your knowledge, you will share your money. You will share your knowledge, you will share your money, and this is the way you have a society. It's based on what? An intellectual concern towards justice, a spiritual concern towards brotherhood. Do you have it? Are you sure that you have it? Are you sure that as Muslims, when you speak about brotherhood in Amal Mu'minun Ikhwa, you are not talking only to the people who are around you? That you are coming mainly from Pakistan and Bangladesh, and the, 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 the best brothers are still the Bangladeshi and the Pakistani, the, the, who are more brothers than others? And you go to some Arabs, it's exactly the same. You go to African Americans, it's the same. We have a very narrow understanding of what brotherhood means. While in the 14th century you have an Imam in Nawawi. Now, 14th century is not a modern interpretation speaking about human brotherhood. Are you able to look at non-Muslims and think beyond your behavior there is something which is a human brotherhood? That you are coming from the same source and at the end of the day there is only one God for all of us? that I can look at, be, at you beyond your differences in a way which is I respect who you are and this human brotherhood. Now, 
I disagree with what you are doing. I don't like what you are doing. I am going even to struggle against the injustices that you are spreading around, but I am respectful of this dignity of human being, which is the essence of human being. This is brotherhood, which is very important for us, and human brotherhood, it's important. Spirituality is part of this. As Muslims living in this country, don't speak about social justice without, you know, while forgetting to speak about the spiritual dimension of it. And what is spirituality when it comes to social justice? Is meaning. Why are you doing what you are doing? Why are you struggling? Let the people understand that you respect them, but you love the creator of this world. Let them understand that you are doing this because there is a meaning here, there is a driving force, there is light in your heart, and this is what you are trying to do. And I would, I, it's important not to be shy showing this. This is exactly where, when we struggle for social justice, we should be able to speak about why we are doing this, in which way we are doing it. That we are not here to convert the people, but we are here to serve the people. Because in the name of God, we are here to serve the last one, to serve the poor, to serve the marginalized, to serve the people who are not seen. Because he tells us to look at the people who are not seen by others. This is the meaning of spirituality, and this is why as Muslims, we should be an added value in this dimension. And then, as I said, it's also to connect all our struggle to a dimension which is not only this obsession of rights, but something which has to do with a deep feeling of love. You know, um, in the book on the Prophet Salam, there is one story which was very important for me when I, 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 I tried to translate which kind of lessons we can draw out of it. It's the discussion with Lubaba. Lubaba was the, the, the companion of the Prophet Isa and, and when the Prophet Isa was to leave Medina, he was to leave him in charge of the city. He had a problem with someone. A, a, a poor man came and said, you know, Lubaba wants to take the tree, uh, the fruit tree, that, that the palm tree, which is, uh, he's saying it's his, but he's, this is the only thing that I have. And Lubaba said, no, this is mine. Justice, this is mine. But look at this, be careful. Justice is a condition, is not an end. If you start worshiping justice, you are lost. You worship God, use justice. Justice in our world. And Lubaba, after they checked, Lubaba was right. So he wanted the palm tree again, he wanted back. So the Prophet told him, but give it to him. Say, no, this is my right. And he was right. And one of the companions was there listening to this discussion. And he said to Lubaba, look, I'm going to take your, to buy from you your palm tree and I will give you all my trees for that palm tree. I said, that's, this is trade, that's trade. Add to justice benefits. He said yes. And he gave him his tree and he took the tree and he gave it to the poor man. Which lesson? Lubaba was right and Lubaba was wrong. Lubaba was right in the name of justice, but as for spirituality, he was wrong. In Allah ya'muru bil adl wal ihsan. Here was the ihsan. The ihsan is sometimes you have to go beyond justice. Be careful, justice is not an end per se. It should be a condition and a means. And this is a companion who was so close to the Prophet, I said to Salam, that the Prophet was sad to see him acting like this. And this is the paradox. It's very paradoxical. You know Abu Dhar? Abu Dhar was so strong against injustice. He is known among the companions as someone who was very strong acting against all these corrupt, you know, leaders who are, who are taking money. And then once he asked for leadership. Ya Abadhar, 